Okay, so here's a question. Find the delta G for this reaction right here. Now, the reaction is um, methanol undergoes combustion to form carbon dioxide and water. By the way, uh, that's a liquid, and that's a gas, and that's a gas, and that's a gas. And so, you're asked to find at 25 degrees Celsius what the delta G value is. Okay, now look, there's a couple of different ways to be able to approach this, and all of them you're going to be provided with all the information that's necessary to do that. Now, you're going to say, oh, hey, you know what? Right now, I got no other data here. I got no, don't look at this yet. But <laughs> I got no data to be able to do this, but I can make a good guess as to what the delta G is and whether it's spontaneous or not. Yeah, sure you can. Look, we've got liquids and gas turning into gases, an increase in entropy for the system, and five molecules, but it's making six. So the entropy of the system is increasing, and I know that that's combustion of methanol. Methanol burns, it's an alcohol, it burns, and so that's going to be negative here. Negative and a negative is going to make a spontaneous reaction. Yep, but that's not the question. The question is to calculate the delta G. It's going to be a negative. What's it going to be? How much free energy comes off to be able to do work, useful work from this reaction? Well, you know what? Here's the thing. Since it's at 25 degrees Celsius, here's what we say. And by the way, at 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. So this entire reaction is occurring in standard conditions. And that means that all of these values can be ascribed a naught. So really the appropriate question here to ask was find the delta G naught. Naught means standard conditions. Not, not, right? N-A-U-G-H-T. Naught in England is zero, right? We've got a football match. We're tied at naught. Right? We have a soccer match and we're tied at zero. Now, so what we're finding is what is the delta G value in standard conditions? Well, then the delta H is going to be in standard conditions, and so is the delta S. Two ways to approach this. Really easy to be able to do. If you know, by the way, you know that this reaction here can have a delta H calculated for it by using the sum of the heats of formation under standard conditions of the products minus reactants. Do you remember two times the molar heat of formation of this plus four times the molar heat of formation of this minus the molar heat of formation of this times two. This is zero because it's an element. When you calculate the delta H for that, that could go there. But then, how am I going? I got the T. I got the T. That's 25. That's going to be 290. See, 273 plus 25 is 298. That's going to be 298K there, kelvins. But what's that? Do you know what? Just as you have a molar heat of formation chart to calculate the enthalpy, that's the heat, here, the delta H, this whole thing applies also for the S value. You can find a chart, and, and you'll be given a chart, where you can actually do the sum of the entropy of the products minus the reactants to get the delta S. No kidding. The delta S naught can be calculated here by the entropy of formation of the products minus reactants. It's the same idea. No kidding. So you can just replace these H's here with S's and do the calculation. The interesting thing is, and don't get, don't not check the oxygen, because every element, except for one, which is H positive, I think, every element has a, an entropy value. So the compounds all do, but remember the heat of formation of, of elements, delta H wise is zero, but not for its delta S. So be, be, be careful, be careful, look for it on the chart. When you calculate that delta S, you can put it into there with that 298K and you could solve for that delta G. But then guess what? That chart might also have these delta G formations. And so the delta G here can equal the delta G formation of the, I'll put the G there, how's that? <laughs> the delta G can also equal the delta G formation, because there is such a thing as the delta G formation for all kinds of chemicals too. Products minus reactants can get you a delta G naught under standard conditions if you know the delta G formations under standard conditions. Your charts are going to have delta H values, S values, and delta G values. Plug them in using products minus reactants to be able to solve for that, or you can solve for these two and then solve for that. And by the way, if you do these two here and solve for delta G, or use solve for delta G using this method, those two numbers are going to be the same. Duh.